God's special message is only for you. Don't overlook it. God is ready to address all your troubles. In the final 30 seconds, find the answers you seek. Stick around till the end for divine revelations. My beloved child, today I want to share an important truth with you. One that I hope will take root in your heart and blossom into beautiful fruit in your life. Listen carefully. For this message is vital for your growth and for fulfilling the purpose I have for you. I don't want you to treat people the way they treat you. I want you to treat them the way you want to be treated. Keep your heart pure and compassionate, reflecting kindness and understanding in every interaction, regardless of how you are treated in return. This principle, to love others as you wish to be loved, is at the very core of who I am and who I have called you to be. It may seem simple on the surface, yet it holds profound power to transform your life and the lives of those around you. Let us explore the depths of this truth together. First, understand that I call you to a higher standard than the world around you. The ways of the world often promote selfishness, retaliation, and treating others based on how they treat you. But you, my child, are set apart. You are called to reflect my character, to be my hands and feet in a hurting world. This means rising above the petty conflicts and retributions that plague human relationships. It means choosing love, even when, especially when, it is difficult. Remember the words of my son Jesus, who taught you to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. He didn't say this because it's easy or because it comes naturally. He said it because it's transformative, both for you and for those you encounter. When you choose to respond with kindness to someone who has been unkind, you break the cycle of negativity. You introduce a new possibility into the situation, the possibility of reconciliation, healing, and growth. I know this isn't easy. There will be times when others hurt you deeply, when they betray your trust or speak cruel words. In those moments, your natural instinct may be to lash out, to hurt them back. But I urge you to pause and remember my words. Take a deep breath and ask yourself, how would I want to be treated if I were in their position? How can I reflect my father's love in this moment? This doesn't mean you should allow others to abuse or take advantage of you. Setting healthy boundaries is important and aligns with my desire for you to steward the life I've given you. But even as you establish those boundaries, do so with love and respect. Speak the truth, but speak it in love. Stand firm in what is right, but do so with gentleness and compassion. Consider for a moment how I treat you. Do I respond to your mistakes with anger and punishment? Do I withdraw my love when you fall short? No, my child. I respond with patience, with grace, with endless opportunities for growth and redemption. Even when you turn away from me, I am there. Arms open wide, ready to welcome you back. This is the example I set for you, not because you deserve it, but because love is who I am. And as you grow in your relationship with me, this love should increasingly define who you are as well. Treating others with kindness and understanding, regardless of their behavior, is not a sign of weakness. On the contrary, it requires great strength and courage. It means choosing vulnerability over defensiveness, empathy over judgment, forgiveness over resentment. These choices may feel risky, but they open the door to deeper, more meaningful relationships and personal growth. When you encounter someone who is difficult to love, remember that they too are my creation. They bear my image, even if it's obscured by pain, fear, or misunderstanding. Try to see them through my eyes, not excusing their harmful behavior, but recognizing their inherent worth and potential for change. Your kindness might be the very thing that softens their heart and helps them see my love more clearly. This approach to relationships isn't just about how you treat others, it's also about cultivating your own heart. When you choose compassion over retaliation, when you respond to hurt with understanding rather than anger, you're shaping your own character. You're becoming more like me, growing in emotional and spiritual maturity. 
This growth will serve you well in all areas of life. From your closest relationships to your interactions with strangers. Remember, my child, that your actions have ripple effects far beyond what you can see. If you want God's grace always upon you, then please consider to support our ministry by clicking thanks button. A single act of kindness can set off a chain reaction, inspiring others to pay it forward. Likewise, responding to negativity with more negativity only perpetuates cycles of hurt and misunderstanding. By consistently choosing to treat others with love and respect, you become a powerful force for good in the world. You become a living testament to my love, a light in the darkness. This principle applies in all areas of your life, in your family, your workplace, your community, and even in your online interactions. In a world that often encourages snap judgments and harsh words, your measured, kind responses can stand out as a beacon of hope. Don't underestimate the impact of a gentle word, a thoughtful gesture, or a choice to give someone the benefit of the doubt. As you practice this way of living, you may find it challenging at times. There will be days when it feels like your kindness is being taken advantage of, or when it seems like choosing love isn't making a difference. In those moments, come to me. Pour out your heart. Share your frustrations and disappointments. I am here to listen, to comfort, and to strengthen you. Remember that I see every choice you make, every sacrifice of your pride for the sake of love. None of it is wasted. Moreover, as you persist in this path, you'll begin to notice changes within yourself. Your capacity for empathy will grow. You'll find it easier to forgive, to let go of offenses. Your own peace and joy will increase as you free yourself from the burden of resentment and the need to even the score. You'll discover a freedom that comes from basing your actions on my unchanging love rather than on the fluctuating behavior of others. This way of living also invites my blessings into your life in tangible ways. As you sow seeds of kindness and understanding, you'll reap a harvest of the same. Not everyone will respond positively to your love, but many will. You'll find your relationships deepening, your influence growing, and opportunities opening up as others are drawn to the spirit of grace they see in you. Remember, my child, that this command to love others as you wish to be treated is not just a nice suggestion. It's a fundamental principle of my kingdom. It's how I designed human relationships to function at their best. When you align yourself with this principle, you're stepping into the fullness of life that I intend for you. Let me also remind you that you're not alone in this journey. I have given you my Holy Spirit to dwell within you, to guide you and empower you. In those moments when loving others feels impossible, lean on my strength. Ask for my perspective. Allow my love to flow through you. You'll find that what seems insurmountable with your own resources becomes achievable through my power working in you. As you grow in this practice, you'll also find yourself becoming more attuned to the needs and feelings of others. You'll develop a sensitivity to the hurts and hopes of those around you. This awareness is a gift Treasure it and use it wisely. Let it inform your words and actions, helping you to be a source of comfort and encouragement to those in need. Remember too that this principle of treating others as you wish to be treated extends beyond just your actions. It encompasses your thoughts and attitudes as well. Guard your heart against judgmentalism, prejudice, and assumptions about others' motives. Instead, Cultivate a spirit of openness and genuine interest in others. Seek to understand before being understood. Listen with empathy, even to those with whom you disagree. This doesn't mean compromising your beliefs or values. You can stand firm in your convictions while still treating others with respect and kindness. In fact, living out this principle can make your witness for me even more powerful. When others see you responding to hostility with love, to criticism with grace. They'll be curious about the source of your strength. This opens doors for you to share about my love and the difference I've made in your life. As you practice treating others with kindness and understanding, you may find that your perspective on conflicts and disagreements begins to shift. 
Instead of seeing others as opponents to be defeated, you'll start to view them as fellow human beings, each with their own struggles and stories. This shift can lead to more constructive dialogues, creative problem solving, and ultimately, to reconciliation and peace. Feel free to share this video with up to three people. If you feel the need for God's presence, let others too bask in the divine light of our Heavenly Father. Remember that every person you encounter is fighting a battle you know nothing about. The coworker who seems grumpy might be dealing with a sick child at home. The stranger who cuts you off in traffic might be rushing to a family emergency. The friend who cancels plans at the last minute might be struggling with depression. By choosing to respond with kindness and understanding, even when you don't know the full story, you create space for grace and healing. This principle of treating others as you wish to be treated also extends to how you treat yourself. Many of my children are far harder on themselves than they would ever be on others. But remember, you too are my beloved creation, worthy of love and kindness. Treat yourself with the same compassion and understanding that you extend to others. Forgive yourself when you fall short. Speak to yourself with encouragement and take care of your own needs. This self-compassion will actually enhance your ability to show compassion to others. As you continue to grow in this practice, you may find that your definition of how you want to be treated evolves. As you align your heart more closely with mine, you'll desire not just kindness and respect, but also truth spoken in love, accountability that helps you grow, and challenges that strengthen your character. Allow this growing maturity to inform how you treat others as well. Remember, my child, that this way of living, treating others with consistent kindness and understanding is a journey, not a destination. There will be times when you fall short, when your emotions get the better of you and you react in ways you later regret. When this happens, don't despair. Come to me in repentance, receive my forgiveness, and then extend that same forgiveness to yourself. Learn from the experience and recommit to the path of love. As you walk this path, you'll find that it leads you into a deeper understanding of my own heart. My love for you and for all of humanity is unconditional, unending, and unshakable. It doesn't depend on your performance or worthiness. As you practice loving others in the same way, not based on how they treat you, but based on their inherent worth as my creation, you'll gain new insights into the depths of my love for you. This principle of treating others as you wish to be treated also has the power to break generational cycles of hurt and dysfunction. Perhaps you grew up in an environment where love was conditional, where kindness was seen as weakness, or where retaliation was the norm. By choosing a different path, you're not only changing your own life, but potentially altering the course of your family for generations to come. You're creating a new legacy of love, one interaction at a time. As you interact with others, strive to see beyond the surface. Look past outward appearances, social status, or first impressions. Remember that each person you encounter has hopes, dreams, fears, and insecurities, just like you do. They have a unique story and infinite value in my eyes. When you treat them with kindness and understanding, you affirm their worth and dignity as my creation. This principle also invites you to be proactive in your love for others. Don't wait for people to treat you well before you show them kindness. Take the initiative to spread joy, to offer help, to speak words of encouragement. Be the first to reach out, to forgive, to bridge divides. This proactive love can be revolutionary, breaking down barriers and opening hearts in ways you might never have imagined. Remember that living out this principle doesn't mean being a doormat or always agreeing with others. There will be times when you need to speak up against injustice, confront harmful behavior, or disagree with popular opinions. But even in these moments, let your words and actions be guided by love. Seek to build up rather than tear down to heal rather than wound, to unite rather than divide. As you grow in treating others with kindness and understanding, you may find that your circle of compassion naturally expands. 
You might feel compelled to care not just for those in your immediate community, but for those suffering in other parts of the world. You might develop a deeper concern for social justice issues or for the stewardship of my creation. Embrace this expanding heart. It's a sign of your growing alignment with my own heart for the world. Type Amen in the comments and don't forget to share this message with up to three people so that God can help you. Remember, my child, that this way of living, treating others as you wish to be treated, regardless of how they treat you, is not just a personal choice. It's a powerful testimony to my love and grace. In a world often characterized by division, hostility, and self-interest, your consistent kindness and understanding can be a radical act. It can open doors for reconciliation, spark curiosity about your faith, and draw others to the light of my love shining through you. This principle also invites you to cultivate empathy, the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes and understand their perspective. As you practice treating others as you wish to be treated, make an effort to truly listen to them, to seek to understand their experiences and viewpoints. This empathy will not only help you respond with greater kindness and understanding, but it will also enrich your own life, broadening your perspective and deepening your wisdom. Keep in mind that living out this principle doesn't mean you'll always feel warm, fuzzy emotions towards everyone. There will be people who are difficult to love, who test your patience or challenge your resolve. In these moments, love becomes a choice, a decision to act with kindness and understanding, even when your feelings don't align. This chosen love, rooted in commitment rather than emotion, is often the most powerful and transformative. As you continue on this journey, be patient with yourself and with others. Change takes time, both in your own heart and in your relationships. Celebrate small victories, the moment you choose a kind word over a harsh one. The time you respond to criticism with grace instead of defensiveness. Each of these choices is significant in my eyes and contributes to your growth and the healing of the world around you. Remember too that this principle of treating others as you wish to be treated applies not just to individuals, but to groups as well. In a world often divided by race, nationality, religion, or political affiliation, you have the opportunity to be a bridge builder. My child, click on the join button to join us as a cherished member of our community. Treat other groups with the same respect and understanding you'd want for your own even when, especially when, societal norms encourage division or prejudice. As you grow in this practice, you may find that it influences not just your personal relationships, but also your choices as a consumer, a citizen, and a global community member. You might become more mindful of how your actions affect others, from the products you buy to the policies you support. Let this awareness guide you towards choices that reflect my love for all of humanity and for my creation. Remember, my child, that when you treat others with kindness and understanding, you're not just affecting the present moment. You're sowing seeds that may bear fruit long into the future. The person you show kindness to today may pass that kindness on to someone else tomorrow. The conflict you diffuse with understanding might prevent years of hostility. The forgiveness you extend could break a cycle of resentment that's lasted for generations. My beloved child, Remember that every act of kindness, every choice to respond with understanding, every moment you treat others as you wish to be treated, these are not small things. They are powerful echoes of my love in the world. As you continue to walk this path, know that I am with you always, guiding you, strengthening you, and delighting in your growth. Let my love flow through you, transforming not only your life but the lives of all those you touch. This is your calling, your purpose, and your greatest joy. Go forth in love as I have loved you. Amen.